Welcome again to the Executive Presence Spotlight Series. My name is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor, and I'm so excited for you to join us here where we shine a light on how executive presence is actually generated. It's an elusive topic, uh, and you can read about it on the internet, you can read books about it, um, but I would dare say that a lot of those don't actually help you generate more executive presence. They just talk about traits that executive, that people with executive presence have, but they don't really get to the kernel, to, to that kernel of truth about how executive presence is actually generated. So that's what we're gonna do here in this 10 part series. This is the second episode. Uh, so thank you for joining us. So I'm wondering if you've ever skied or snowboarded down a hill, how does that work as you get better at it? Do you turn as soon as you need to turn? Like, do you wait until you're about to ski off the mountain or hit another person on the hill? Or are you constantly turning ahead of time or anticipating when you should turn, right? And maybe you're not into winter sports. I'm not a big winter sports guy. Maybe you're walking down a crowded street, right? And do you just walk straight down the street until you're about to crash into some big, giant, <laughs> immovable person and then you scurry out of the way? Or in the meantime, you just knock other people over? Or are you constantly making adjustments you know, shifting your shoulder this way or that way or stepping a little bit to the left and right. So you can easily and safely navigate down the street as well as the other people. So you just keep within the flow of traffic, both the way you're going and the way that's coming towards you. So that feeling, right, is one of the six degrees of executive presence. It's the first one that we're going to talk about, and it's called being proactive. Why is it important for someone to be proactive if they want to be perceived as having executive presence? So imagine uh, you know, you're on a team, whether you're the leader or you're a team member and some problem happens, right? And as each problem happens, you're like, oh no, let's figure out what happened and let's wait to see what happens before we do anything, right? And you just sit, and you wait and maybe things get better or maybe things get worse, um, but you're not really proactive, you're more reactive, right? You're not anticipating anything and you're not responding in a way to sort of take control of the problem that happened. So when you're proactive, that really inspires confidence in you because people can see that no matter what situation comes up, you are going to take action to improve the situation and why? Because by improving the situation, you will increase the chances of success for the project. And that is something that is valued by teammates and it is also valued by leadership, right? Have you ever asked someone about something that happened that was their responsibility and, and, and it didn't go right and they were just like, it's out of my control. Like, I did my best and it didn't work out. What can we do? And they just kind of pointed fingers at someone else or made an excuse. And they didn't, they, they almost didn't even really seem like they had even thought or, or, or tried to do something to make the situation better, right? Or they waited until it got so bad and then they came to you with a problem and said, mm, boss, sorry, this happened and I was hoping it would get better, but it's been four months now <laughs> and, and now we have a problem. And your boss is like, oh my gosh, why did you not? come to me sooner or why didn't you do something about this sooner? We could have fixed this, but it's four months later and now we're in a deep hole and we'll be lucky uh, you know, if, if we can resolve this. So that is kind of the opposite of, of what you want. You want to be more proactive. And when you have that state of being, it really inspires confidence in people that you can be a good leader because you have those leadership skills to anticipate future problems, needs, and changes. So that's what uh, proactive means from a definitional standpoint, and that's what you want to be doing from an executive presence standpoint. So in our next episode, we're going to talk about another degree of executive presence. The next one is going to be uh, the state of being resolute. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. 
And if you want to fast forward or get deeper and get more information, um, you can also check out my book, Unlock Your Executive Presence, available on Amazon right now. And I'll have uh, details uh, in the notes. And I just looking forward uh, to exploring the rest of the six degrees of executive presence with you. My name is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor. Remember, you can change your life one connection at a time. Thank you. For more information about how to elevate your career, go to connectioncounselor.com for my blog, podcast, and free guides. If you'd like to find out more about how to make executive presence work for you or your team, email me at joe at connectioncounselor.com. Thank you.